So this video is going to be covering chapter 20, section 1, which deals with the introduction to electrochemistry. Now electrochemistry is all about uh, redox reactions. More specifically, because redox reactions involve electron transfer, so electrons sort of moving around uh, throughout the reaction, uh, release and absorption of energy can be expressed not just in heat, so you know like our typical kilojoules or degrees Kelvin, but this movement of electrons can also express electrical energy, which we'll measure in terms of current and amps and power in voltage. As we've already discussed, redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons, and usually uh, if they're in contact during a redox reaction, so for example, if you have a solid piece of zinc metal in contact with a copper sulfate solution, in other words you have your copper uh, ions and your negative sulfate ions, uh, if these two are in contact you can get a heat transfer, so you know a change in temperature of the system. In this case uh, you have the zinc inside this copper sulfate solution and these Cu2 plus ions uh, take electrons, in this case two electrons, from the zinc to make neutral copper that forms in flex on the metal as the copper ions contact the zinc which proceed to precipitate out. And this uh, redox reaction involves an increase in the temperature of the whole system. Now as we've already s discussed by the definition of redox reaction you must necessarily have a reduction and oxidation reaction happening simultaneously. However, they don't have to happen in the same place within a beaker, chemical cell, etc. For example, if you have a barrier between a solid piece of copper and this solid zinc, what is known as a salt bridge or sometimes just uh, a porous barrier, uh, you can conduct electricity rather than heat because if you have this solution and each one has its particular ion dissolved, in this case you have CO CuSO4, so you have you know copper plus uh, ions in here and then zinc ions over here as well as if you, this is you know, zinc sulfate. Now this porous barrier allows ions to go through and neutral atoms cannot. For example, the neutral Cu atoms we formed in the last reaction that raised the temperature uh, can't get through this barrier. However, the transfer of electrons due to the oxidation of zinc and the transfer of ions across this barrier from one to the other allows for a sort of complete circuit around which allows you to conduct electricity. Now just for some terminology, this solid copper that's in solution as well as this solid zinc uh, are what are known as electrodes and electrodes are basically just uh, conductors in this case because they're both metals, they're both pretty good conductors uh, that are in electrical contact with a non-metallic part, in this case the solution. In other words, this is what connects the metal copper, the metal wire, and the metal zinc to the non-metal part of the solution, that is the, uh, the uh, solution of uh, the circuit. And each of these individually, that is the electrode dissolved in or the electrode rather inside a solution of its own ion is what is known as a half cell. And as you'd expect, these two half cells together make a whole electrochemical cell. Looking more closely now at the individual half cells, uh, we can write a reaction for what happens in each of these metal uh, solution interactions. For example, this neutral zinc, which is solid in this bar, uh, is ionized in a uh, oxidation reaction 
and loses its two electrons. And because oxidation occurs at this uh, electrode right here, this is what is known as the anode. And this is easy to remember because uh, oxidation begins with a vowel and anode begins with a vowel. Oppositely, the copper over here gets the electrons through this wire and then takes the copper ions from solution and combines them, building up excess copper on the metal down here. And that's described uh, by the following reaction. You take your copper ions from solution, add the two electrons that transferred over in the wire uh, from the zinc, and oh, that's not a plus. You react them or you reduce them rather to form solid copper which builds up on this electrode. And because this is a reduction reaction, uh, the copper is what's known as the cathode. And that's easy to remember because reduction and cathode begin with consonants. So just to reiterate, oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction occurs at the cathode. And then you, as the last step to completing the circuit, your sulfate ions, of which there's too high a concentration because the copper is dissolving out, those migrate towards the slightly positive uh, anode of the zinc. Oppositely, these newfound uh, zinc ions move across the barrier to where all the electrons, electrons are. And it's this cycle of electrons forming the copper and the copper, because of its lower concentration now that it's formed solid and come out of the come out of the solution rather, the sulfate comes over here to complete the circuit and it keeps going. Lastly, we're going to be moving past looking at the individual half cells, that is the zinc electrode with its uh, solution and copper with its solution, to look at this complete cell, that is the, the two half cells combined and their complete reaction. And so you describe a complete cell uh, using a given format, that is, you describe the anode first and then the cathode. And not only do you have to describe which end is the anode and cathode, but you also have to describe, you know, uh, the electrode as well as the solution for both. And so that's usually given with a format where you write the electrode and solution for the anode with a bar in between and then two bars to represent the separation between the two half cells and a bar in between the electrode and solution for the cathode as well. So as an example this solution over or this complete cell over here on the left would be a uh, zinc uh, ion solution and a copper with copper ion solution. And then to write a full equation for the cell, just like you do with all redox reactions, you take the two half reactions, in this case, the oxidation as it relates to the anode and the reduction as it relates to the cathode, and then combine them. So you cancel out these two electrons on either side, and you get solid zinc plus aqueous copper ions yield zinc ions plus solid copper. And in the next video, we're going to be moving on to discuss uh, specific examples of different types of these cells other than the zinc copper cell we've looked at as sort of a universal example for this video, as well as how these work in the real world.